The average entrepreneur is overpaying in taxes by over $11,000 every single year. Every year, $11,000. This year, last year, next year. This presentation is for you if you're an entrepreneur. Four steps on how you can cut your taxes. Let's get into it. Step number one, get a tax projection. You can't change the future if you can't see what's coming. And you can't change your taxes after the year is over. So you have to first get a tax projection. At a very minimum, this will tell you what you need to plan for from a cash perspective in April. But in a best case scenario, this gives you situational awareness that allows you to have a foundation for a good tax plan. Once you have situational awareness, you can then apply the right strategies for entity structures, deductions, and investment and wealth strategies. But understanding where you are now and what's coming is the first step. Get a tax projection. If you don't already have one, you need one. Number two, get the right entity structure. If you're a business owner of any kind, of any size, you need to have an LLC. The LLC gives you flexibility to change and adapt to the right entity structure to meet your needs down the road. So if you don't have an LLC, open one. Once you get above about $30,000 per year in taxable income, this LLC should elect to file as an S corporation. It's the same LLC, but you make an election to file taxes as an S corporation. And you only ever need one S corporation. You should own this S corporation 100%. That has a couple of different advantages. The first one is that Every S corporation you have has to pay you W-2 wages, a salary. And every single dollar of wage that you pay yourself gets payroll taxes siphoned off. 15.3% of any dollar that you pay yourself in wages goes automatically to the government in payroll taxes. So it's a huge waste to pay yourself more wages than you absolutely have to. And way too many business owners end up with more than one S corporation and every S corporation is paying them a W-2 wage. Now imagine how much is getting siphoned off in payroll taxes that could be avoided. The second reason why you only need one single S corporation is that it makes everything simple. You can stack any other business you're involved in. If you have a partnership, it's owned by your S corporation. If you then open another business, which you own completely, that's also owned by your S corporation. And everything funnels into one business, which reports to you, and this gives you an opportunity to take all of your expenses and all of your deductions within one single entity that you control completely. I cannot count the number of times that I have seen partners where one partner wants to drive a Porsche and the other one wants to drive a Corolla, and it wouldn't be fair to either of them to put those cars inside the same business and share the costs. So they both end up not running their cars through the business and therefore they don't have a place to deduct them. This is bad for everybody, but it works fine if you have your own S corporation that you own completely and that you have complete control over what expenses you do or don't take within that company. For any passive investments that you own, you'll need to have another LLC. And that LLC is a holding company. And this is where you'll own any rental real estate. You'll own any passive investments into other companies, any oil and gas investments, any stock will be owned within this holding company LLC. But this is also where you will pay your kids if you decide to have them work for you and take deductions for paying them. There are more advantages to paying your kids through a holding company LLC than there are through an S Corp. This entity structure right here is everything you need generally up until about $500,000 of taxable income. If you're under half a million dollars in taxable income, this is it, nice and simple. If you're over half a million dollars in income, then it's time to start considering using other entities. And that often might include a C corporation. A C corporation has a flat tax of 21% as opposed to the 37% highest tax bracket for you individually. Another entity you might consider at this income level is a tax trust. And this is different 
from the revocable living trust that everybody should have as part of your will. The tax trust is a separate taxable entity with your children as beneficiaries that allows you to shift some of your income and some of your passive losses from accelerated depreciation into the trust where those losses can offset that income. It's a way to avoid passive loss restrictions, but it's not for everybody and should generally only be considered if your income is over that half million dollar mark. The third step to lower your taxes is to live above the line. The vast majority of Americans have income and they pay tax on all of that income. Then with what's left, they cover expenses. And then with what's left at the very bottom, the very last one to eat is the investments and the savings. And this is why the savings rate in the United States is generally under. What we are really doing with a lot of tax strategy is trying to move expenses and investments above the line so that we have income minus expenses minus investments so that we get taxed on what's left over there. And now our tax is smaller, our investments are bigger, and what's left over is bigger. This is living above the line. And the key to making this work is understanding that there are two requirements to taking expenses pre-tax. They are that the expense has to be ordinary and necessary. If you meet those two tests, the expense is ordinary and necessary in the operation of a business, then these are legitimate deductions that can be taken above the line. Just stop and think about that for a second. Almost anything that you're gonna spend money on could be ordinary and necessary for some business circumstance. It might not be necessary for your business circumstance right now, but if the incentive is big enough, if the deduction is big enough, it's worth a little bit of hassle to rearrange your circumstances in order to make it ordinary and necessary. So with every major expense or investment, you should be asking not can this be deducted, but how can this be deducted? How could I arrange my circumstances proactively before the year is done in order to take this as a pre-tax expense or deduction? And finally, number four, get a second opinion. This is so important. Just stop for a second and think about the snowball effect of $11,000 invested back into your business. What does that turn into? If you ran advertising and spent $11,000, you would presumably get more than $11,000 back. If you could buy a machine that would make your business run more effectively, you would get more than $11,000 back. Your business is an asset and investing money back into that asset will produce more income. Now do that again next year and next year and you start to save more because you are earning more and the tax savings accumulate faster and those investments accumulate faster and faster within your business. This is literally quite often the difference between the entrepreneur who goes from starting to wealthy inside of 10 years versus the entrepreneur who is perpetually stuck in this spin cycle of financial crisis after financial crisis. You are the center of your universe and you are the owner of your money. You can have a CPA who can help you with your taxes. You can have an attorney. You can have a financial investor, money manager. You can have a bookkeeper. All of these people are there to help and assist you with your money. None of them care about your money or the outcome as much as you do. It's your money. You own it. Get a second opinion. Make sure that you have the best strategies and that you're not sending tens of thousands of dollars extra to the IRS every single year. You're watching this video for a reason. You have doubts. You have concerns. Address them. Own it and get a second opinion. Most entrepreneurs overpay in taxes by $11,638 every single year. This was done in an independent study. Among our clients, we've found that the average savings is over $44,000 per year. So let me ask you a question. What are you overpaying? And more importantly, what are you gonna do about it? If you'd like some help, I have an offer for you. I would like to help you 
cut your taxes and grow your wealth. And the first step to do that is a one-on-one -on -one 60 minute strategy call with me. Now this is a little bit of a different strategy call. I'm gonna give you every amount of value that I can for one hour. And during that hour, I'm going to be talking with you and building out a baseline scenario and various options for strategies that you could use to lower your taxes both now and into the future. And each one of those strategies will have a tax savings calculation at the bottom. So you'll know how much implementing each strategy will save you. And at the end of the call, this document is yours. I will send it to you. You own it. You now have your tax roadmap for 2023. I will give you every bit of value that I can out of this hour phone call. So how much would having the right entity structures, having a personalized roadmap, and having some support to understand how to get from point A to point B, what would that be worth to you? I don't normally bill by the hour, but on the rare occasion that I do, it's $500. And I'm even including a satisfaction guarantee. So if you don't feel like it was worth it, I'll give your money back. And in fact, if all I did was help you learn one strategy that you could use year over year over year, this would be a no brainer. If all I did was help you save more in taxes this year than $97, this would be a no brainer. If all I did was help you understand how much you were gonna owe next year when you file, this would be a no brainer. There are so many ways in which this call will pay for itself. And I don't intend to do one of those things. I intend to do all of them. So what's the catch? Well, to be totally transparent about it, I hope to provide you so much value on this call that you want to continue working with us. There it is. But even if you don't, that's okay. I will give you as much value as I can in this call because I want to help entrepreneurs lower their taxes. And if you then decide to take that and continue working with your CPA, that's wonderful. I hope that both you and they can learn and grow and pay less tax. And if you do decide to work with us, that's great too. The thing is, I don't have a salesman. So this is my time. And frankly, my time is limited. So all I'm asking is that you put a little bit of financial skin in the game. In exchange, I promise you that I will deliver the absolute maximum value that I can in the time that we have together. And that this will be such a no brainer in terms of value that you receive versus the money that you invest. So if that sounds like something you wanna do, go ahead and click the link in the description to get started. I look forward to talking with you.